Okay, perfect. Now I see it. Fantastic. I'll probably be like 10 seconds behind, as you said. Yeah. The thing is, like, right now, if there's a spec delay, you can actually get to the extra time of the spec delay. But once you jump into the game, after it's launched, you always will have a 10 second delay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I see that now. Okay. So, English, French, while we're in the Dark Age, uh, I will just look at your build a little bit and make sure that you have that set, set up. Uh, I'm not sure if you look, dove deep into build wait, wait, yet, wait. but I'll oh, just... Oh, God. I, uh, somehow, my cursor is going onto my second screen. Oh. How, how do I fix that? Uh, you Just alt tab very quickly. I'll, I'll tab very quickly and then go back in. I should fix it. Yep, yep, okay. Yeah. Tech support live on stream here. <laughs> The first time I helped someone with tech support, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two to gold. All right. So, um, this matchup is something that should favor English, by the way. Um, I'm not sure how you'd usually approach it, but maybe you can guide me through like your initial strategy here for this game. Okay. First of all, statistics say 55% win rate for French. Yeah. And normally I approach it. More on wood than usual, early barracks on the way to feudal age, and longbowmen plus spears. spears, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like that. So that's a good strategy. Let's go for that, and then let's see what uh, what goes well, and then uh, we can build from there. Uh, no second scout. Is that something you do every game? Nope. It depends on the map. Um, I think on this one, just having the earlier timing and harassing him is something that I value quite a bit. Hard agree, yeah. I think it, with English, especially in this matchup, I only always do one scout. I agree with that 100%. <clears throat> oh, it sounded like a question where I was wrong. No, no, so, no. Yeah, no. I, okay, I just okay. like to see you got like, better where at your that. mind is at. Okay, and, okay. and to be honest, I, I don't think there's right and wrong. Like, the meta is too, like, new anyways. I think a lot of it comes down to, pro like, personal preference. Um, yeah, right and wrong is something that shouldn't have too much uh, of a value here. Okay, so I would definitely have uh, extra villagers on the landmark, and I would definitely move some vills from your food to your wood. Um, okay, how? What yeah, time exactly. are you? Are you like? Um... Oh yeah, I'm uh, two forty-five right now as I'm speaking. Okay, okay. No, then you're only like two seconds behind. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I see the wood being moved. That's good. Yeah, that, that's good. Then rally the next vills to wood as you're doing. Perfect. Yeah, I think three vills on the council hall is really good. I also see you mining gold with one villager. What's the plan with the gold? What do you want to spend gold on in Feudal Age this game? Mm, I would have so thought uh, a tech upgrade for yeah, but long do you, do you pick up wheelbarrow? Do you pick up wheelbarrow at some point? No, like only if it's long Feudal Age. No, no, we, sh we should prioritize wheelbarrow. It's really, really good. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is like after the council has built, you send one more villager from building the council hall, send them to gold. We'll keep just two on gold. That's all you need. Mm -hmm. We're going to get wheelbar first and then the attack upgrade for the range later. And you're going to see the nice timing on both. And what we're going to do as well is try to minimize the use of berries. Since you didn't get a lot of sheep, we will have to make some, we will have to take some berries, but we're going to farm as, as much as we can, uh, as fast as we can afford them. Basically, basically is the plan. Okay. Yeah, I can turn the fog on as well here. Uh, it's glitchy. ugly now, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a little glitchy. We'll keep it on open, but I'll be I'll make sure not to give away a, a extra information, obviously. Good timing on the barracks. What I would say is, in general, um, I would say make the barracks next to your town center because you never know when your opponent will not be able to scout that. Now it's really far forward here. It's easy to scout it. Mm -hmm. And you don't need the space near town center with English, right? So yeah, okay, okay, okay. So don't yeah. be afraid to use that with houses and stuff like that. Alright, start moving some vills to berries as well. Want to have that smooth transition. Okay, I 
RC, right away rallying longbows forward. That's not bad, but very risky. Normally players will wait so they have like two, three spearmen and move out in one group. Getting that house as well now. All right. So at some point now, uh, as we put the pressure on, we're gonna go for a wheelbarrow. Wheelbarrow is considered the best eco upgrade by far, uh, aside from professional scouts. So if you don't go professional scouts, usually most players will pick up wheelbarrow early. You only skip it if you need to put on a lot of early pressure. In this matchup, you don't really need to. And then we can put some pressure on with our army, of course, as you're doing. Okay. What I would recommend is you rally some of those to wood now, and then you build farms as soon as you can afford it, build farms, because it's much better than, uh, than berries. So now we see the tower, so now we know that he knows that we're here. If at any point you feel like he's got more armor than you, you can consider running back to your base and just remassing. Because right now he can easily cut you off if he has more armor. And that's something that you have to you have to feel. If you can continue doing damage, obviously that's really good as well. Back home we got wheelbarrow, that's very good. And we'll just continue doing that thing, we're just rallying to wood and then farming whenever we can using the berry villagers. Nice pick on the scout. So during that fight, your TC was idle about 40, 40 seconds. Okay. Well, I was happy that I produced army at least. Yeah, yeah you had good, good army production, which is not too bad. You're doing the right thing on the trades. <clears throat> okay, now we should definitely back up a little bit just to kind of uh, reset the game because right now our units are all over the place. I would go back and just remass a little bit. We don't need to pressure that heavily We can, because we see him making a lot of armies, so we can relax a little bit and then work on the next step. So okay. The next step should be to get a blacksmith and get some upgrades. You also have a lot of uh, wood now, which is good. So we also need to get a second mill to set up a second row of farms. Just make that mill to the top of your town center, uh, say northwest of your town center, and you can easily get eight farms around that mill. 
That's going to be the next step. We can also heal the Lombos using the campfire. And we'll just wait to move out again. It's something that you don't need to rush. Like, the French will have a good economy over you, but your army will always, almost always be stronger uh, if, you, uh, if you take the fights correctly. Okay, okay. Alright, we gotta get some vills back on gold now for the blacksmith upgrades. In my opinion, I feel like you should just you should just leave the two vills there because they you might put a little bit of gold, but uh, there's enough there's enough things to spend your gold on throughout the throughout the game. Oh, you don't need to send that many though; just just a couple is fine. Um, we pick up the blacksmith upgrade, and yeah, now, now the important thing is to set up the farms and keep keep making the units like constantly produce longbow and spearmen nonstop to always make sure we have a good army. I spent the gold on eco upgrade. Uh, I did the wood upgrade. Not sure how okay. good it is. Yeah, it's it's not necessarily the best, but it's not bad either. If you get it, it's uh it just means that we will get delayed castle time for a little bit of extra um, um like wood. But the the main thing is just to pick up wheelbarrow as the as the like the important uh, eco upgrade. Okay, so now the best thing to do right now is to continue massing nonstop. And we're gonna wait till we see a sign of him. With your scout, try to find his army. Is he at home? Is he attacking you? Etc. Found it. Yeah, there it is. So that's perfect. So now we can group our army and we can start to, to take some fights. If you feel confident in how much you have. If you don't feel confident, we'll have to work to another production building. But the important thing is to keep constantly producing army. Mm, tough for me to judge, right? He will always have the better like, vision. Yep, no, that is true. That is true. It's not bad to move out though, because if you move out, we actually have like a, a pretty cheap army. So even if you take a slightly bad trade, it's okay usually. Okay, we got the counterattack there at the gold. Deal with that first, of course. And wheelbarrow helps you run away from these kind of raids, which is really good. So continue massing now throughout all this, which you're doing, which is fantastic. We'll try to cut off his knights. Once we do that, we'll go back to and hit him pretty hard uh, at his base. So you should be able to get a couple kills back to this, uh, back here if you can trap the knights. We also see he has armor. Yeah, I would have never checked that. Yeah. Okay, now our army is going to be much stronger. What I recommend is that you send a villager forward and you try to find a place where you can build a tower. Now, it's a bit risky because it's always a chance to lose the fights, but our army should be stronger if you, can, if you continue producing constantly and, and rally forward. We also should probably pick up the archer armor upgrade because we know that he has archers on the field. So get the iron undermesh. There we go. And I would just wait. You don't have to go too forward with the tower. The first one should be in a good spot. I like the spot you picked. Yeah, that's something you can easily defend near the stealth force as well. But I would recommend as well a tower on the gold if you can afford it. Because that's going to help a lot versus the counter attack. I actually don't like that uh, other mill you made. It's okay, but we're not going to need much more farms right now. We actually need a, a little bit more wood. So it would be better to not have made the mill and just save the 50 wood. Good pick off on the knight though. And now he, we see him castle, so we'll, we'll work towards castle, but we have a window now where you can pressure. We have a window now where you can pressure and you can do some damage. And we're going to work towards castle at home as well. Nice. Archers focus his archers. Yeah, 
I should be focusing his archers with the longbow and not his knights. You need to thin out his mass. Yeah. Alright, economy management at home kind of slipped. I think at this point, what you should do is pretty much abandon the forward position and go back home and wait with your army. And we need to rush in H3 now. Yeah, so you did a decent trade. Let's go back at home. We need to stop produ stop producing for a little bit. We just need the food. I would cancel all of those as well. Because you just need to rush H3 at this point. And with basically all your Woodvilles, rush it down at the wood near that gold. King's Palace. Yeah. And then just get all your bills on that. Yeah, perfect. And then continue massing Lombos at home. So now, Lombos Spear is still a good composition, but we need more production buildings. What I would suggest is probably get a market just to balance out your wood for the time being. And I would probably want a second range as well, so another range. Because you need to get a lot of Lombos. A few Spears is fine, because we saw like his army now, he had mainly archers and just a few knights. Okay, and the towers you put, they're getting some value, they're taking some time away from him. You also know that he's on that front gold, and you also see his army moving out towards you now. Alright, at this point, balance your economy to be able to afford the uh, elite longbow upgrade, or the upgraded uh, longbow. That's the, that's the key unit. Also, we don't want to move out for a while. We have two town centers now, so it's okay. Our early game wasn't the best because we idled our town center a little bit. Trades were decent, but... Mid game is still very winnable. Let's chill, play defense for a little bit because he has the bigger army at the moment. Nice, great defense there, great defense there. Okay, so going for the Monastery is definitely not a bad idea. I actually like that. With th that gives us a pretty good win condition. Now, we should just stay pretty much permanently on defense. What I don't like about your base is the lack of vision though. I would definitely get a tower near that second range that you made. I would just get a tower near there to defend those that side and give you so much more vision. That helps you position your army on defense. You're actually underusing towers a lot on defense. Like, they're really good. So just get a tower in that area just to get a little bit of extra vision and help maneuver your army. It also triggers the network of castles, so with, with, with English it's actually a really good thing to get some towers out on the, across the map. I see you got textiles, let's produce those from both town centers, I see you only on one town center right now. Textiles oh. is a good upgrade though, and we also want to get the attack upgrade from the blacksmith whenever we can. Monk first is great. And now we see him clearing up your second blacksmith. So the reason we know we can play passively now is that we didn't see him on pro scouts. So he will be just one base, no pro scouts. He'll have a good economy because he's French. And now we're getting some defensive units. Okay, let's continue massing Lombos. And I would also get the veteran Spearman upgrade. Oh, you have that. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, just continue massing Lombos. We don't need crossbow because we saw him on a lot of archers. So I would say crossbow is not very necessary. And now we see him attacking us on the front. Cool. That's actually fine. Alright, we need that uh, attack upgrade on the on the Lombos. It's very essential to be able to do damage to the knights with, with that one. And right now, I feel like your 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 Lombo army is in the wrong area. Yeah, he's attacking from the front. Um, and we are stacking that relic on the bottom. Yeah. Okay. Alright, we do see those knights moving across, so now you can easily just maneuver your Lombos wherever you see his knights.
Okay, your spears got caught chasing this. We actually lost 10 spears there for, for basically for free. We do know he has a Magnal though now. He did kill a few of his knights. At this point, you should use the market to get a little bit more wood. We need to add some spring to our army. Spring would be our only counter to basically Magnals. And we're going to continue massing spears and lombos. You have to be more careful with the spears though. Spears are basically only to keep the, lombo, the, the knights off your lombos. The lombo for you is the main unit. You also have a tower at the front that I would cancel just to get back the wood. Isn't it we'll giving me time? And no, I, I wouldn't try to go get it at this point. You're just going to be wasting villagers. You know he has presence around there. Lombo save. Nice. I would say your defensive play hasn't been bad, but you definitely made a lot of mistakes in army positioning, and we'll talk about that a little bit more after the game. For the time being, the biggest thing is just to get a ball of 3 spring gold. I don't know if you know, but 3 spring gold one shot to Maginot, so we just absolutely need 3 spring gold now. We also have the relics coming in, so we're not doing that bad uh, in terms of economy. And you've lost like a ton of villagers for that for that forward outpost, so it's it's really just not worth it. Because even if you get it, he will easily just kill it down anyway. So that's definitely something you should stop um, stop trying to do, and not do in general to to try to kind of force forward outposts. It's not that important to have vision like that far. And if you want to, you just make a scout instead from the town center. Much better. One scout is basically the same as one village, anyways. All right. At this point, we need to start thinking of more production buildings. I would say. Based on what you, what you think you need, like probably either second barracks or more range. That's your, your armor composition will be like archers and spears. Mm, I think I will need more barracks. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. And basically those 10 spears we lost earlier are the reason he's able to run at us like this very easily. Yeah, and now it feels very hard to win the game. So your sprinkles got a lot of value. In a world where we we were able to protect those, you would have actually had a much better defense. But you actually get you actually killed a lot of his units there. That was really good. That was actually really good. Wow, that, that was a really nice defense. Imagine if you had those ten uh, ten spears to protect the the sprinkles. Would have been fantastic. But as it stands, it's really good. Now let's start thinking of pushing back. I also see you starting to mine stone. It's not bad. I actually like that for the mid game. We'll look to secure some keeps and maybe get some sacred sites on the map. But for now, it's important to start pushing out of our base and actually start winning fights. So everything on Spearman, you can use the market to balance your eco. We want Spears, we want Lombos, and we want to push out the map soon. Okay, we see the keep. Okay, this is insane moment of the game. Hard pressure, buy the stone, 10 bills, castle where he has it. We're gonna have to take a risk at some point. Okay, you got him to do the cast, the cast of the night. That's really good. All right. As far as upgrades from the blacksmith, I would get defense on either Pierce armor or um, versus melee units. But defense is really good because it works for both your units, so it's definitely very good value. And we see his red palace. That's huge. That's huge. You got the cancel though.
All right, I think we should get a keep in the center of the map. We do know he has enough for Imperial Age right now, so we should go very aggressive. I wouldn't even mind a forward keep, but at least in the center of the map is not bad. Keep putting the pressure as much as you can now, because we do know he has enough for Imperial Age. Earlier in Pillage doesn't necessarily mean we lost because it takes a long time to get his upgrades and a lot of eco, so we don't know what his position is right now. Okay, that keep is going to be problematic though. We're going to need to find a way to pressure around that keep. And at this point, hitting key gold spots would be the play. We're trying to deny gold as much as possible. Ooh! How did you get Ooh, in yeah, the there counter raids the got. Yeah. How did he even get in? You were walled. Hmm. She didn't even see that. It must have been a hole in the wall. That, that's actually quite unlucky. like gg honestly yeah yeah i think we can call it if you want to call it you can call it because that's uh that last raid really hurt you i think i thought you were fine before it but yeah losing 20 bills and now having to deal with those knights in your base is really tough hmm. yeah uh let me quickly ask for his pop but we will do resign yeah i, I can tell it's uh, 104 for him he has 104 pop right now oh, okay 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 hmm. if you want to continue playing definitely can huh yeah but I still think he was winning that game because uh, at this point you will have to just chase the knights around. But okay, let's recap. It, it was not a bad game. Keep in mind the chat. Nilly picked an opponent that's way higher yellow than him. Like Fa Phantom is like, like top tier. He's like rank 30 right now. So this is a strong opponent. Nilly went toe-to-toe -to -toe for a long time that game. Okay, let me ask you first, Nilly. What do you think about that game? What do you think you did well to start? Oh, pedagogic um, approach. Nice. Yeah, well, why not? Like, Because I, I, th I think a lot of things did go well there for you, mm -hmm. honestly. Mm, I for a change. I think I'm I'm super impatient if I play archers. That was the same with H two and H four, and okay. I was out on the map a lot. And I think I got better at that. Um, I think for my standards, I was especially in feudal age not floating a lot of resources. I. Um, felt at least I realized where the threat was coming from or that. I think rally control was really good. Um, the one timing with the mangonels, that looked nice, but I think it was also like him suiciding the mangonels, so I will give me 50% of uh, yeah. well done, Nile. Good, good, good hold, yeah, mm. fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I think I agree with you, and I think the biggest thing you did well, to be honest, was getting the relics while defending your base. Like that was actually really good. Like you found yourself with four relics. That's a that's a pretty like that's a pretty good if that's your style, just to pick up relics and chill. That's a pretty good way to win the game. So let's take a look. Do you still have the game open? Look at the economy tab. Despite playing against French, you actually had like a much better food wood eco. He had more gold, most probably because he had the guild hall, but also he had a pretty solid economy himself. Mm -hmm. And that was despite him raiding you constantly. So your economy was good overall, and just from the, the stats after it. Take a look at the Vilhai as well. You had 76 to his 87. So we obviously took a lot of damage, had, had some idle time. Obviously, French DC is a factor here. So what I would th say is the easiest things to work on from this position is A, your feudal age. I can tell that you have some bad habits that you can easily fix up. Like, for example, I think you were new to how you made, like, ha like how and when you make the farm transition. Because you went way too heavily to berries earlier. And, like, you almost, like, with English, you almost never, like, I would even recommend you don't touch the berries. You just make the first mill away from the berries just to farm. Like, that's how that bad berries okay, are with okay, English. Okay. Yeah. So I noticed you went, like, everything to berries, and that's, like, really bad. So I would say, like, that's, especially with English, that's a really bad way to play it. With other civs, you have other options like pro scouts and whatnot. It's a different story, but with English, 
You really don't want to touch berries as much as possible. That's number one. Second thing, I would get in the habit of getting wheelbarrow every game. It's really important. And I also saw you like putting bills on gold and taking them out. It's good. It's okay because it was like the first time you didn't know like what you needed to afford and whatnot. But I would just say, generally speaking, keeping like two bills on gold with English on gold, you can get like eco upgrades. You can get like um like uh, the blacksmith upgrades. So there's always something to, st to spend them on, and you can also just save up for castage as well. So I would say just keep get in the habit of just keeping two to three bills on gold. I think two is a good number. Getting a wheelbarrow and really not using berries. That's for fuel age. Also, production seems to be a big factor for you. You idle your TC and your production buildings quite a lot, and I know that's something that you want to work on. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely say you, you don't necessarily need more production buildings. You just need to be constantly making and constantly yeah. producing yeah. units. Yeah, like one range, especially the council hall, and one barracks can take you a long way through feudal age. You just have to keep them working as much as possible. And, uh, and as far as castle age, there's a lot of things you can do. You chose the relic uh, approach in this one. I think that's definitely fair. I also noticed you tried to secure the map, like getting towers and stuff outside the map and walling. While I think that's not bad, I honestly think that just doing a tighter defense with the English is better. Because if you have your longbows at the, at the middle of your base, he can never attack you. If he attacks you on one area, you can easily just move and uh, defend it. I would say keep the towers closer to your base. Your towers are a bit too far out. Okay, so okay. keep them closer to your base. They give you enough vision to know where he attacks, and then you maneuver. Last thing I'll say, mm. army positioning on defense. Like, keep them way closer to your, to your town center and not out on the map. It's, it's the towers that should be making your vision. If you want vision, make a scout from the town center. It's 60 food, it's one vill, and that gives you vision far. You don't want to move your army forward to see if he's there and then go back. It's something that you want to do as little as possible. So that was the, the, the few things that I noticed. And uh, I think we can either run the matchup again or try something else as you see fit. You can let me know what you think.